Hey Station Leaders, this is Brent. I just wanted to record a quick video outlining the email you just got from me. What I want to do is just kind of help uh, explain anything. So call me, email me, whatever. This is our orientation because of the time crunch we're in. So I hope this is acceptable to you and makes sense. Uh, so I'm just going to talk through it. So you can read along in your email or you can just listen to this. Uh, but please read the email because it has more details of what I'm going to cover here. So first off, thank you, thank you, thank you to responding to our Backyard Blast. This is our take on Vacation Bible School. It's going to be an awesome week. The kids are going to love it. They're going to love you. And I really believe that they're going to have an encounter with God this week. So be praying for lives to be changed, for relationships with Christ to be deepened, and just for um, the kids to have fun. You know, the more fun they have in church, uh, the, the better off we are and the better off their faith is long term. So uh, expectations, as soon as we get here, be excited to spend time with the kids. You really set the tone for each of the stations that the kids are going to be visiting. And, and please be flexible. This is our first time doing this in a long time. I'm sure there are lots of things that are going to uh, be uh, have been overlooked. Things are going to not go according to plan. Just flow with it. We have a bunch of cool kids on campus with a bunch of fun leaders, and as long as we have the right attitude approaching it all, it could honestly, it could all be a total disaster organizationally, which it is not, but the kids will have a blast, and we make it whatever we want it to be for the kids, and we want it to be fun, and we want it to be a productive time where they're getting some really hands-on attention from our leaders. Uh, there's a few terms you should know. The crews are our grade groups that are going to be rotating to your station. So each crew has a crew leader that is the one person in charge and then there are crew helpers. They are serving the crew leader to make sure that everything is looked after. So identify the crew leader because they will be the, the most influential one in that group hopefully and they can help uh, you distribute responsibilities, chores, things like that to the crews. So they should be broken up into kind of mini crews. Um, there is a security station that's part of our check-in table, and that is something that you should know about. The crew leaders are aware that this exists, and so if there's any issues, defer to the security station. So you can walk a kid to the check-in or out table, and there should be a gentleman there who will be serving as our security guy for the week. Um, the stations are, we have the music station, skydive diner, this is our snacks in the multi-purpose room, imagination creation, this is our craft station, and this is um, outside the main auditorium the, uh, in the church. All-Star Games, this is the games, of course, it's in the field. If the weather's poor, we'll be moving it into the activity station. And then the Wild Blue Adventure Story, this is our Bible Story station, and it, that's upstairs in room 204. Also uh, is our opening and closing. This is the 15 minutes on either side of the day. It's n You have no responsibilities there, but I think it's really important for you to be there because you get a feel for what the kids are experiencing, especially the opening because you can relate, hey, remember when Billy the Goat did this or wasn't that funny when that happened? And the more connections you make to what happened previously in the day, the better off our kids are and they're going to really grasp what exactly we're trying to teach them that day. So uh, times and locations, uh, Monday morning meeting, it is extremely p important that we see you at 8.30 in the morning. We have a quick 15 minute meeting to touch base, review the day that just happened, preview what's going on. You guys can give any specific instructions to the crew leaders and I want to have time for us to pray for the day together. Um, your room will be open at 8 a.m. if you want to come a little early. You're also welcome to stay later in the afternoon. Child care is provided at 8.30, so you can drop your kids off with Sylvia at that time, and the, uh, the room will be ready for you to jump in there. Our opening session starts right at 9 a.m. Uh, I know you have a lot to do between that 8.30 and 8, 8.30 time, so if you can um, be in the room at 9 a.m., get a feel for the day, that's going to be great. And as soon as we're done, you can split right to your room, and the groups will be right behind you. Child pickup starts at noon, so uh, make sure that um, that's kind of the end of the day. The last station, it's important that they get back at 11.45. So the crew leaders are responsible for keeping time, but you also set the pace for it. There's two things that often go wrong with our stations. One is they end way early, and then the kids have nothing to do and are running around crazy, so manage your time there. And the second thing is that they go late, and that we have this chain reaction, this backup, and that's also bad. So. Um, you'll get a feel for it after the first day or two, so by Friday you'll have it down, uh, but make sure you're kind of managing your time well and keep an eye on the clock. Dismiss them with five minutes to get to their next group. That should be a general rule of thumb that works really well. So your duties include, uh, one, being here for our daily meeting at 8.30, being a part of our opening at 9 o'clock, the opening service, uh, 
three to receive the crews at your station. Make sure that you're ready for them to come. There's not a lot of time in between, so maybe the last part of each crew could be helping you clean up and prepare for the next one. Put them to work. I mean, just work them. They, that's what they're there for. They're going to love it. Um, four, make sure to adjust per age. The content for each station is pretty universal, but if you have a, a bunch of younger kids or older kids, you might find it uh, a lot helpful, a lot more helpful for you to make some minor adjustments. The language you use, the pace you use, the things that you do. You, you know, you may be able to do some more advanced stuff with the older kids that you wouldn't try with the younger kids in a game or music station. And uh, there may be some things that go over awesome with the younger kids that you're going to have to do differently with the older kids. So you just kind of have to play that by ear. If there's an emergency, flood, earthquake, fire, whatever, follow the instructions posted by the exits mm -hmm. of each room. You should become familiar with this so you know what they are. Uh, but the crew leader should be taking points, so just help them. If there's a real emergency, call 911. If there's a minor emergency, call my cell phone. It's posted in the email that I sent you. Help the crew leaders. You know They're depending on you for guidance and instructions. Uh, help them be the ones working with the kids. This shouldn't be your role. You should be directing the crew leaders around, helping them know what to do next, and let the crew leader spend time with the kids. Obviously, you can interact with and have fun with the kids if you like, um, but make sure that the crew leaders are the primary, um, the primary workers with the kids. That's going to help uh, them out throughout the week. And be clear on your instructions. They're really following your lead. Um, at the end of each day, if you'd please clean up your room, pick up any garbage so it's ready for you. However you leave it, how you're going to see it at the next day. If you have any supplies that need to be returned to the church, uh, it's best if you hold on to them till the end of the week. Then we can collect them at one big go on Friday or even later the, the following week, that first week in July, bring them in. Um, if we kind of get stuff throughout the week, it's going to just pile up into a big mess. So if you can hold on to it in your trunk of your car or a corner of your room until the end of the week, that will really help us out. Keep all your receipts. We want to reimburse you for your expenses, and we can only do this if we have a receipt from you. So uh, you'll see under number five policies, we have some expectations for behavior. Uh, you should know that we want kids to keep their hands and feet to themselves. No wrestling around or running. We want them to, to keep their seat in their seat. This means that they are supposed to be where they're supposed to be. So not running around or being crazy, but we want them to be uh, where they're supposed to be. And third, they need to listen when the leaders are talking. They're going to have lots of time for discussions, but it's not during the teaching time. Uh, discipline, you should be aware of this. Know that the crew leaders should be the ones disciplining the kids, not you guys. Um, the three steps are, and you could read more about them, is a verbal warning, a timeout, and then we just take them to the security guy, and he will call their parents. That's steps one, two, and three. Uh, it's rare that we get to step three, and if we do get to step three, it's rare that we have to take more than one kid to that point, and the security guy is going to determine whether or not that kid needs to be picked up or if they can stay with him for the rest of the day, or maybe they'll be returned to their group after a, uh, some time there. Um, the crew leaders will be taking the kids to the bathroom. That's not your job. The policy is there. Reporting child abuse. This is important. We're required by state law to report any suspected child abuse. Please follow these steps. One, do not attempt to get any information from the child. What you're reporting is your suspicions. You are not a detective, and we do not want you asking the kids, kids probing questions about how they got the bruise, uh, why are they hurt, why are they limping. Obviously, you can talk to the kids. Um, but do not try to get information out of them uh, that corresponds with any suspicions you have that they may or may not be being abused. Two, uh, listen and observe the kids. We really want them to be safe, so be aware of their behavior. Keep an eye on them and just be aware of, of what they're doing. Uh, we don't want you to turn a blind eye and ignore it and pretend it's not happening. So just observe. Just do a lot of listening. And the third is, if you have any suspicions, write it down and give it straight to me. Myself and um, other people on staff have been trained to deal with this. Um, you may have had some experience with it in the past. Just write down as many details as you can, give it to us, and we'll take it from there. Um, that's reporting child abuse. R keep it real simple. Um, no medication. Don't give the kids any drugs, any uh, ibuprofen or aspirin, or anything like that. If there's any injuries, uh, any minor injuries, could be handed at our security desk. Any real blood or something like that, if it's really gross, call us. We'll come to you. If they can just put a paper towel on it, it's good. The kids are playing. They are having fun. They're all, they are going to fall down, and they are going to get hurt, and that's all part of the fun. But uh, we don't want any serious injuries, so make sure to keep the energy level at an appropriate level. And two, we don't want to um, have a bunch of kids pretending they're hurt when they're really not. Just uh, give them a wet paper towel, um, tell them they're awesome, and then they'll mostly, most likely forget about it in the next few seconds. Um, my contact information is in the email. Call me if you have any questions. 
And also, just one last reminder, 8.30 in the morning, I will see you on Monday. It's going to be a blast. Be praying for us. I'm super excited for our first Backyard Blast here at Evergreen.